Yo, what's good, homies? It's your boy Stanula back at it again with another Dead by Daylight video. And today, we're taking a different path. We're taking a different approach. We're trying to get you better at looping by breaking down the aspects of looping that are easily interpreted by someone who's either new or someone that's been playing this game for thousands of hours. I think in this video, if you stick around through the whole thing, you'll learn something. And hey, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this. Let's get into the video. Upon re-editing my video, I've decided that this is probably the most important tip to begin with. And it's basically whenever you get hit, you wanna use your 150% movement speed that you gain and try to create as much distance between you and the killer to force the killer to catch up to you and chase. This wastes a lot of the killer's time, and by actually going to the next structure that you see when you're looping, instead of getting hit initially and trying to make it to the first pallet that you see, use that speed burst and try to make it further. Try and put as much distance between you and the killer as possible, forcing them to catch up to you. Getting into our first tip is to focus on getting fast faults. I know it's hard on some tiles, but if you really practice and try to overemphasize hitting a fast fault, your muscle memory will get more used to going for fast faults more often. Hitting fast faults is not only important because one, it does extend your chases, but also hitting a fast fault versus a medium vault can often result in you surviving longer in that chase or you going down. Let's get into actually trying to hit a fast fault. When you're going for a fast fault, you're going to get one of two prompts, either a prompt for a running vault or a regular vault. You always want to shoot for that prompt for the running vault, as you can see. Now, the way that you can most effectively achieve getting a running vault every time is by trying to hug whatever surface that you're running on tightly and then whipping your character around and vaulting straight on towards the window. Depending on the angle and your timing, this will either result in you getting a fast fault or you getting a medium fault. It all has to do with the angle at which you're approaching the vault and the timing of when you're hitting the vault button. If you guys want me to go over like a fast vaulting guide for specific maps, let me know down in the comment section down below and I'll be more than willing to make it a Following that, we're hopping into using your camera angle to your advantage. And what I mean by that is looking behind you while you're looping, because a lot of the time you can gain a lot of information while you're looping a killer based off of the killer's movement and what the killer's doing currently. Whether or not you think you're going to make it to a pallet to drop it, or you think that you should greed the pallet and go for another loop, or you should drop the pallet and get the stun and continue on to the next loop. There are various structures, tiles, and even objects throughout the map that when you're looping that you can have line of sight of the killer. And this is really important to keep in mind because any advantage that you can have over the killer by seeing them before they can see you is huge. A lot of structures throughout the maps will have pretty thin walls that will allow you to see the killer's red stain through it, and you should use that to your advantage. Next, we're going to get into chaining multiple tiles together in order to most efficiently maximize your loop. Windows are your best friend when you're playing this game, and if you're able to triple vault the window, meaning that you vault it three times and the entity blocker comes up and you're no longer able to vault it, if you're able to make it to a different loop then, instead of dropping a pallet, you're efficiently running tiles in a way that, one, it's going to annoy the killer that you're not dropping pallets, and two, you're going to have so many resources on the map when it comes to endgame that if the killer does have no ed, you're going to still be safe. When you're trying to connect multiple tiles, you need to keep in mind the orientation of the tiles, whether or not one tile leads into another or whether or not you're going to have to go out of your way to get to that tile and potentially get yourself hit. 
I would say when you're first starting to learn how to loop, your best friend is probably going to be the perk windows of opportunity. And this is not only because it's going to show you where every window and palette are around the map, but it's also going to allow you mid chase to figure out where you're going to go next. Another thing I would like to touch on is using the killer's red stain to your advantage. When you're looping a killer, they're going to emit a red stain depending on what killer they're playing. If they're playing an undetectable killer, obviously then they won't have a red stain depending on what killer they're playing. But nine times out of ten, the killer is going to have a red stain. And you can use this to your advantage when you're looping structures. If you look behind you, you can tell if the killer is still following you by seeing if their red stain appears. You can use that information to your advantage to either keep looping that structure and vault the window or faking the vault on the window and either continuing to a, another loop, a pallet, or a different window. Now, when we're talking about looping throughout the maps, there are different structures that you will become accustomed to looping. And the first one that we're going to go over is a LT wall. Don't mind this amazing Adobe Illustrator job, but this is basically what an LT wall looks like from an aerial view. I'm more of a visual learner, so I don't know if this helps you or if it doesn't. I'm probably going to end up using a couple of these throughout the video because I kind of learn by um, also like physically being in the moment playing the game, but also having something as a reference to kind of go back on. When you're looping an LT wall, the most efficient way is to loop the T wall vault the window, go to the right, loop the L wall, vault that window, go to the right, and just keep vaulting the windows in a clockwise formation until the killer either one doubles back or tries to cut you off and go to the middle. This is just a visual representation. Uh, the survivor pathing is blue and the killer pathing is red. Once you start to go up against better killers, a lot of them will realize that what they're doing by their pathing is incorrect, and a lot of them will try to correct it. So when they do try to correct it, this is what you should do. Assuming that you're following this as a reference point, when the killer decides to switch up and not chase you clockwise and instead try to cut you off through the middle, this is what you should do. You should vault the window first and foremost and then when you vault the window I want you to look back through the window and try to keep eye contact with the killer. Starting with the L wall you vault the window and you wait at the corner because when you wait at the corner you have really good visual of the killer whether or not they're going to follow you around one side of the L wall or they're going to try and double back in order to mind game you. Moving over to the T wall, you want to stand at the edges of the T because not only can you see the killer through the window, but you can also see if the killer is coming behind you around the other side of the T part. Right here, I'm just kind of holding the corner and checking behind me to see if the killer's still chasing me. Again, I'm trying to use the killer's red light to my advantage to see whether or not I should keep looping or I should vault the window or I should fake the window. And it's pretty much a mind game when you're playing Survivor against a really good killer because a lot of the time the killer's going to try to mind game you as well. I know the previous clip was me at a jungle gym, but the same applies to a jungle gym that applies to a L wall and a T wall, honestly, because you can kind of play them in the same way, kind of bait the killer into thinking that you're going to vault the window and fake the window and then try to gain distance or try to make it to the other L wall or the T wall that you're trying to get to. All right, I know it's an amazing illustrator job. It kind of looks like a dick, not going to lie. But when you're looping a T-wall, if you automatically vault the window, a lot of the times, the next time that you vault the window, the killer is going to double back. 
And when he does this, you can read him and either fake the window and continue along the long side of the wall and wait at the tip of the wall. Or you can curve around and vault the L wall. Same goes for an L wall. If you get the killer to double back, you can go along the long side of the L wall and curve around and vault the T wall. This is more of an advanced way to loop an LT wall. It will catch a lot of killers off guard most of the times. And let's start with the L wall. When you vault the L wall, if the killer is chasing you and they go around the wall, you want to follow the long wall. And you can either vault the T wall or you can wrap around the L wall and attempt to try and fast vault the wall. You can either do that or you can continue on to the T-wall where if you continue to the T-wall, you vault, you go to the right along the long side of the wall, and then you can attempt to fast vault back through the T-wall again. This is an alternative route if the killer decides to cut through the middle. You want to wait at the edges of the T or L wall so you can gain information on where the killer is and if they're doubling back or if they're vaulting. You just want to keep eye contact with the killer at all times. It really helps. Hopefully these diagrams kind of teach you the ways of looping an LT wall. I know it's kind of scary at first, but a lot of the time it's simple if you just kind of break it down. And I know some of these kind of could be confusing to some people, but I promise if you pause the video and you really take a look at them, you'll be able to understand them a lot better. Let's get into jungle gyms. Typically, you want to run jungle gyms in a clockwise fashion, vaulting the window and going towards the pallet. Depending on whether or not the killer mind games or the killer changes their pathing will determine what you should do after you vault that window. Whether you should continue along the long wall and go to the pallet, or you should continue along the short side of the L wall, which would be in this case right here and simply just run around and revault that window until it either gets blocked off or the killer mind games it. Another thing you can do as you're rounding the long wall is instead of going towards the pallet, try to fast vault the window again. A lot of the time this is going to throw really good killers off. And just as a reference, here is a diagram of pretty much what I just explained. So if the killer does indeed decide to double back, you can always fake the window and go straight towards the pallet. The biggest thing here is trying to keep your eye on the window and try to read the killer's movement and see what direction they're going to try to go in. If they try to double back around the short side of the L wall, you can always, instead of going to the pallet, you can always loop back around the long side of the L wall and continue on counterclockwise. Now we're moving on to long wall jungle gyms, probably one of the stronger structures in the game as far as looping goes. Uh, whenever you get to this tile, you kind of should feel pretty safe because it's usually a really, really safe tile depending on how you play it. And a really good way to play it is whenever you vault the window, try and take a step back or two so you can see at a deeper angle where the killer is running to if they're going to run to the right then you go to the left if you go if the killer tries to run to the left then you go to the right or you can just vault straight back through the window when you see the killer round one of the corners this wastes a lot of the killer's time actually so basically this is just a aerial shot of what a long wall jungle gym looks like i want you guys to pay attention to the part with the window that is really really important when you vault the long wall jungle gym, the killer has three options. He either vaults the window, they go left, or they go right. When you're looping this structure, you want to try to keep eye contact with the killer through the window. As you can see in the clip, I'm constantly trying to track where the killer is through the window. And it just makes it so much harder for the killer to even catch up to me and chase, let alone get a hit. There's a lot of different ways to run a long wall and a lot of them come down to the killer's decision and whether or not he decides to double back. And in this clip right here, I'm trying to run the unconventional side of this uh, jungle gym. 
using the outside wall to my advantage. Keep in mind you can see the killer's red stain through the wall when you slow down the clip. This gives me an idea of when I should double back through a chase. If you're tracking him through the wall, you can see that he runs to the side that I'm going to. So I just double back and then try to get more distance. Basically, now that you have a rough idea of some of the fundamentals of some of the most common loops in the game, let's transition into a more stressful topic for some people is looping on indoor maps because I honestly can tell you that some of the indoor maps on this game are some of my favorite maps to loop on and it's just because if you recognize what structures are similar to like an LT wall or like a long wall you can loop them exactly the same as you would an outdoor map which makes it a lot more manageable when you spawn in on an indoor map it's always kind of good to run around a little bit to figure out where you are on the map because a lot of the time with indoor maps people kind of get confused on their location so if you figure out your location you can start to figure out where around you are very good loops and are also unsafe loops like on this map for instance if i'm sitting in this generator room i know that i have so many ways to escape if a killer comes in this room when you utilize a perk such as windows of opportunity that allows you to see all of the auras of pallets and windows throughout an indoor map, it can allow you to become a lot better at looping indoors because it allows you to determine where the safe loops are and similar loops that you're used to looping, such as a TNL wall or a long wall. So yeah, let's get into it. If you see double windows ever on this map, you can almost play them like a TNL wall where you kind of keep going back and forth between them until either the window blocks off or you see an opening to get to a different loop or get to a pallet. Right here with this loop, it's similar to an LT wall. I'm going to break it down on an Adobe Illustrator so you guys can kind of see a different perspective of it. So bear with me. My art is uh, kind of sus, so I don't know how it's going to look. This is how I interpreted the room design. Uh, I'm not an interior designer, but the window is marked in red. Now that we have gotten an idea of what this room kind of looks like, let's get into how do we loop it. The most optimal pathing is to vault the window and continue along the long side of the L wall and try to re-vault the window. When you vault the window, it forces the killer to either one, vault the window after you, or take a detour and go all the way around and try to catch up to you. Really cool thing about Larry's is when you start to realize what loops you can start to connect together and what these loops technically are, essentially. This loop coming up right here is an example of just a long wall. And if you run it in that exact way, it's a similar style to any other long wall that you've run before. Let's talk about pathing. And what I mean by that is how efficiently are you looping certain structures? Are you hugging these objects closely enough that when you're looping them, you're making it to the pallet as quickly and as efficiently as possible? Or are you going around the object too loosely and giving the killer an easy hit when in reality, if you were hugging the object closely, you could make the palette more consistently with the reworks to bloodlust and a lot of the killers gaining it quicker throughout chases you need to start realizing what palettes you can use against killers to stop their bloodlust and a lot of the time it is using safe palettes unfortunately there's not a lot of safe palettes around maps but you can use this technique to determine whether or not a palette is safe if the palette is safe then it means that the killer has to break it. There's no way that a killer can mind game that pallet by doubling back. It's just safe. If the pallet is unsafe, it usually has an option for the killer to go around the pallet to hit you. Those are unsafe pallets. A lot of the time when you get to a unsafe pallet, the killer is going to try to mind game you either by moonwalking, hiding their red stain, etc. They're going to try to force you to drop that pallet so it then becomes a 50-50 whether or not you get hit 
or you don't get hit. Most of the time, when you drop the pallet and vault immediately, the killer is going to simply run around the other side of the loop and slap you. But if you do this little trick, when you slam the pallet down, if you walk away and then run back to the pallet, it's almost like you're micro faking that you're going to vault. And you can do this, or you can slam the pallet and crouch right next to the pallet. A lot of the time with survivor animations, a lot of them look similar. When you're vaulting a pallet, it's almost like you crouch down and you jump over the pallet. So if you give that illusion to the killer that you are going to vault the pallet, a lot of the time that person is going to double back and try to read you. I would call these next type of pallets almost a chase extending pallet. And when you pre-drop these pallets, you're able to gain more space in between you and the killer. The killer is forced to break this or either go all the way around to try to catch up to you. A lot of these pallets, honestly, they're really unsafe. So if you either get the stun on the killer and continue to go, or if you pre-drop it and continue forward, a lot of the time, that's your best bet with these pallets. With these pallets being down, you can always recycle them and run back to them in order to reuse the pallet and force the killer to either break it or just bloodlust you at that pallet. In general, it's not good to camp pallets. You'd rather pre-throw the pallet and guarantee your safety rather than get hit through a pallet and waste that resource throughout the map. What you can do in some cases is greed the pallet and just run through it. And a lot of the times, if the killer is committed to getting a hit, he's going to swing through that pallet and allow you to get another loop in. Now let's talk about certain texts that you might be able to do throughout your game that could save your life. Right here we have an FOV tech, and pretty much an FOV tech is basically when you run at the killer, you make it so that their field of view is obstructed. I'll probably put a killer clip on screen of what that looks from the killer perspective. Basically, the survivor will run at the killer and make it so that the killer thinks that the survivor either runs behind them, so they either turn around, or better killers will just simply back up a lot of the time this is going to help you in certain situations when you think you're going to get hit by the killer or you think that you're going to get hit and not make it to that pallet. Sometimes if you do an FOV tech, it'll confuse the killer enough that you make up a lot of distance and you can either make it to that window vault or to that pallet without even getting hit a lot of the time. Pallet fakes are really good to do when you think that if you vault the pallet, you're going to get hit. So the best case scenario is that you kind of run into the pallet slightly, making it so that the killer thinks that you're going to vault. And a lot of the time, if the killer thinks you're going to vault, they're going to swing or they're going to double back. When they double back, you just get more distance. There's a couple other things that you can do at pallets that can allow you to preserve the pallet for even longer when you're looping. And pretty much what I call them are micro fakes. And when you run through a pallet, if you run up against the pallet a little bit and almost bump your shoulder against it, it gives the illusion that you might drop it. Another technique that you can use is when you run through a pallet is if you crouch down next to the pallet, it gives the illusion that you're going to drop the pallet. And a lot of the time the killer will respect. You can also do a 360 back to the pallet, and this is pretty good in case the killer decides to not respect the pallet and run through it. When you do a 360 back to the pallet, you can always vacuum back to the pallet and slam the pallet on the killer if they don't respect. Let's get into window baits, and window baits are a lot like pallet fakes, where if you don't think that you're going to be able to make it over that pallet or over that window, you simply run into the window and with your character model, you wanna flick up and almost act like your head is looking upwards. This sells the illusion that you're going to vault. Most good killers, a lot of the time, will look for your item if you're carrying one. Whenever you vault a window or a pallet in this game, your item disappears, so that's a good indicator of whether or not the killer should swing. So you have to keep that in mind, but a lot of the time, killers will not take that into account. And when you try to vault that window, they're going to swing and you're going to either get distance or get hit five seconds later because you do some stupid shit like me. 
All right, this next tech, I don't really have a name for, so I'm just going to say it's the locker tech. But basically, when you're in chase, if there's a double set of lockers next to each other, if you're getting chased by a killer and you hop in one of the lockers and they're chasing you and they're spamming their open locker button, if you time it correctly, you can jump out and force them to check the locker next to you, giving you a lot of distance. Shout out to the homie Nick for showing me this. Man's built different. He's a P100 Jeff main. Another trick that you can do with lockers is if one of your teammates or you slow vault out of a locker and you get grabbed, you can save them with a flashlight. This only works if you slow vault out of the locker. If the killer grabs you out of the locker normally, since the update, they're no longer able to get blinded. So this just means that you need to exit the locker in order for them to grab you so that your teammate can blind. For a locker CJ to work, you need to hop into a locker and one of your teammates or you need to be down in front of the locker. When the killer attempts to grab you out of the locker, you need to press spacebar and exit the locker. And this will give you enough time to go to the side and get an angle to get a flashlight safe. If you time this poorly, you're going to get grabbed from the locker. But if you time it perfectly, you're going to override the killer's animation to open the locker and they're going to be forced to pick the survivor up. All right, let's talk about CJ tucks. Whenever you see one of your teammates that's downed underneath a pallet and you have a flashlight, this is a good opportunity for one. If you're healing your teammate underneath a pallet and the killer comes, you stun the killer, you fake the blind, you vault over the pallet, you re-vault, and then you blind the killer. When you vault over the pallet, it locks the killer into the animation of picking up the survivor rather than prioritizing kicking the pallet. Once you start to go up against better and better killers, they're going to start to realize what you're trying to do as a CJ tech. So what you can do instead of trying to fake a blind, which sometimes is kind of obvious to the better killer, you can stun the killer, move to the side of the pallet out of line of sight, and then when you think it is enough time that the killer is going to recover from his stun animation and kick the pallet, you can quickly vault over the pallet, locking him into the animation of picking up the survivor, allowing you to do the CJ tech. Moving into a more of an advanced survivor technique, it's called flaring. And when you are flaring, you're going to fake like you're going in one direction and quickly spin in the opposite direction. A lot of the times this is going to throw killers off who are predicting that you're going to go around a corner and they're going to preemptively swing around a corner. Window techs are where you run straight through the killer when they vault. Whenever the killer vaults for a split second, they lose collision. As you can see in the still image right here this is when you should do the window tech when both of the killer's feet touch the ground and this is what it looks like from the killer's perspective a lot of the time killers will not even realize that you've window tech them you can also perform a window tech by simply running through the killer's body and just vaulting back through the window now moving on to the keck tech similar to the window tech you have to wait for the killer to vault but this time, you run straight at the killer and vault through them. When they lose collision, it'll give you an option to vault. This is what it looks like from the killer's perspective. It's inevitable when you're playing this game that at some point you are going to go down. What you need to make sure is when you go down, you need to go down in an area that is inconvenient for the killer. You want to try and go down as far as possible away from any sort of 3-gen that the killer is trying to hold. Try to run edge map and waste as much time as possible if you have no other resources left to use. In this game, time is the most valuable resource, so the more time that you waste of a killer, the less time that they have to pressure the rest of your teammates off of generators and the quicker that you might be able to escape. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you guys drop a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, I'm live five days a week over on twitch.tv slash Stanula, so come check me out. I'm probably live when this video drops. And honestly, I've had a really fun time making this. It's taken me a long time to honestly get all of the clips together and just try to make it as good as possible for you guys. So I really hope that you all enjoyed and... If you guys want, let me know what I can do in the future because I'd love to make a video regarding it. And if I did miss anything, let me know what I did miss because I would love to 
make an updated video in the future, maybe going over a couple of the things that I might have missed out in this video. So I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this. And as always, stay safe, homies. I will catch you in the next one. Thank you.